Charlotte, your host, and today I would like to talk to you about starting your seedlings. Now, this particular episode is going to be on the materials that you need and specifically that you need to go get in order to start um, your seedlings. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's the plan. I am going to go ahead and start my seedlings. I'm going to do each one with you guys. And as I start them, um, hopefully we can do it together. So I want to give you a little bit of a heads up, tell you what things you're going to need. And then you guys can go collect them if you've got them in your home um, or purchase things, um, preferably if you borrow them. That would be awesome. Uh, put stuff together that you're going to need for this project and then come back and on each and every step I will show you how to plant or start different types of seeds. Okay, so what I've done here is I've laid out all the things that I am going to need. Now, you will not necessarily need all of these things. There's lots of different ways to start seeds. So the way I do it is I'll use these tiny little discs, which are really easy to use. You just throw them in some water. They've already got a little indent on the top and the bottom. Throw them in water and put your seed in because they're so tiny. Uh, once, once they swell up and your seed is in there, and then let's say three, four weeks later, maybe not even, uh, and it starts to sprout. You can just take this whole thing, and then you can take a cup and you can plop that inside the cup. Okay, so that's what I like to do. I, used to, I like to do both. Or you can use toilet paper rolls. Um, if you're gonna do it in here, the best thing to do is just cut them in half. Okay, and then I'm gonna do it again. So I wanna make four little cuts. So now I've got like these four little pieces. Okay. And all I want to do is fold them over like so. So now you've got a little base, and you've got a top. Now if you want to, you could use string or or you could um, you just leave it, you know. I mean, okay, it's gonna be a little floppy, but it's really, it's not gonna come apart. And once you've got stuff in there, you're gonna put it into a container or something so it can sit and and it's not, you're, you're not gonna move it again, so you don't have to worry about it moving. So you can do something like that. That would also work really well. If you didn't want to go out and buy your discs. The discs, I believe I get about 100 discs for five euros. I think it's something like that. <clears throat> and that lasts me a pretty good amount of time because I also do um, the toilet paper roll too. And sometimes I go as far as making origami boxes and doing that. So I'll show you guys in a different episode how I make the origami boxes because they're also pretty cool. They're a lot of work. You don't have to use newspaper, you can. A lot of newspaper is made with uh, soy ink now. So you don't have to worry about the ink contaminating your food. Um, it's good to recycle your, your newspaper that way, but it's an enormous amount of work. This would be easier. So just make your little toilet paper roll or use your discs. All right, so going back to our materials. So we've got um, something to actually put the seeds in, like our discs or our toilet paper or our cups. Then um, you're gonna need a tray to grow them in. Now, typically if you go to a building mart, you're gonna find plastic trays with plastic tops and possibly even a grow mat underneath, which is something that's gonna heat it up. The point uh, or, or the reason why you're going to find them in plastic is because it's convenient. Um, they're um, easy, they're throwaways, and they will crack and break and you'll have to go back and buy more. So that's a really great idea for the store because they'll get you to go back every few years and buy a new grow box or grow system or a propagating propagator. What I like to do is use a terracotta pot bottom. Okay, so this is just a terracotta pot tray, and because I'm growing the seedlings, I actually want them to be wet, so swimming in a little bit of water is totally okay. I will refill the water as I go. I'll be able to see it. I'll know that they're not drowning, or if they're drowning, I can check and see, and that's no problem. So I really like to use this. It's renewable. Uh, it's not garbage. If it breaks, I'll throw it into the bottom of my other terracotta pots as I pot, pot them up. Um, I can easily throw it into the garden. Um, it's not made of plastic. Anyway, so I'm all for terracotta. Okay, so we've got the tray and we've got some little round discs or whatever we're going to put the seeds into. Now, additionally, you might want to have gloves. I use gloves a lot when I'm in the garden. Um, I tend to find my hands are really cold, so gloves keep my hands from getting cold. When I'm doing things like this, I don't use gloves. The seeds are so tiny and the seedlings, once they sprout, are really tiny and I don't want to be, you know, I want to be able to feel them and touch them, make sure I'm not damaging them, so I tend not to use gloves. Tools. Um, you can find some really, really nifty, tiny tools. 
uh, this is like a little spade and um, a little shovel, a tiny little rake. These guys are really useful because you can get in there and make your little hole, stick in your, your tiny seed, cover it over. Like it's really nice. Long handles made of wood and metal. Awesome. And go find this all at a building mart. You won't necessarily find it in the seed starting section. You might have to go around and put pieces together. You can also find all of it at a second hand shop or an antique store. That's like the ultimate place for finding any kind of gardening tools that you'll need. Antiques are so cool. And you know, they last forever. They're easy to clean. They're easy to repair. Sand them off, relaunch them, and voila, you're ready to go. Okay, so we've got our tools and our tray. Now we also need Labels. Labels are really, really important. You want to know what you're growing. For example, these little guys in the back, they actually look like peppers. Don't they look like peppers? They are not. They are basil. And only one of them is labeled. So I have to remember that they're basil. And the moment I start growing peppers, then they might get confusing. Now, in the labeling department, I want to show you this too. If you go to the seed starters, you can find little wooden guys like this. Um, they tend to have little pointy bottoms, maybe rounded tops, a little more space than them. Obviously, don't. It's a popsicle stick, okay? So get a normal everyday popsicle stick, and you can get popsicle sticks like a hundred popsicle sticks for a dollar or even more. And um, certainly, if you get them in bulk, you can get maybe a thousand for a few bucks. Like they're really, really, really cheap. These guys are expensive, and when I say expensive, I think um, I purchased them for my shop um, just for fun. Now I got the slightly thicker ones. Um, so they're like three millimeters thick by about two centimeters across by, what is that, five inches tall, five inches high? Um, by, okay, by 10, 15 centimeters high. Um, yes, they're a little more durable, um, but once you write on them, it's often hard to get the writing off. Uh, you can erase it, you can sand it, you can even paint it. Uh, you can paint it with like a, um, a marker, what is that called? With um, chalkboard. You can paint it with a chalkboard paint and then you could write it there. Um, but regardless, I paid like five bucks for 20 of these with a little pencil, but it was really cute. And, and uh, on the day I got it, it was like all wrapped together with a little bow and it was just, it was really adorable. But it was stupid. It was really, really stupid. But honestly, I just bought it so I could show you guys that this is an option. And this option works just as well, uh, only cheaper. So go with the popsicle sticks for labeling. Pencil, tiny little pencil, no problem. You can find that everywhere. What else do we need? We need soil. Now, soil is tricky. Um, you can go to the building mart, of course, and you can pay a lot of money for soil. Okay, so they'll have a whole bunch of enriched compost. What you actually want is a really boring, simple compost. The thing is, a seed, the seed itself, it's just like an egg, it comes with its own nutrients, it comes with its own food. So as the seed grows, it should have just enough food to get it from a tiny seed until uh, into a tiny seedling. And that's why we tend to start them in something like this, which is like a pressed coconut, okay, this little disc. Um, we, it's got nothing in it, it's just coconut, coconut chips. And we like to start it in here because it already has its food to get going. And then once it's gotten going, then you put it into, you know, something bigger and you put all the dirt in. So you don't need to start it in dirt and you definitely don't need to go and get, you know, tricked into this lovely idea that we need like $20 bags of dirt just to do seedlings. It's not true. What you do want to do is avoid anything that's too enriched. Um, definitely anything that's, you know, like you really want something plain and simple. Um, and make sure that it's sterile. So going to your garden and grabbing some dirt out of there is not gonna be the best option, definitely not from your compost, not unless it's set for a long, long time, because it will have seeds in it from last year. So you might end up bringing it into the house and thinking you're starting your own seeds when in fact you're starting dandelion seeds or who knows what, because it's already in there and you're all excited and then you, know, you take them outside and you find out that you grew something you didn't want to grow at all. So sterile uh, dirt is the best option. Now, I don't sterilize my dirt, you can. Um, I do a lot of really bizarre things. I make my own soap and all kinds of fun stuff, but I don't sterilize my own dirt. Um, now, if you wanted to do that, so if you wanted to have dirt from your garden and not have to buy, and you wanted to just use your own things every year, which I am absolutely for, definitely 100%, and maybe in the future I will sterilize my dirt. Currently, I've got a few, a few eggs, so I don't need to. But what you need to do is, um, if you have an oven in the garden, or like a Dutch oven concept, which is 
is where you take a pot and you put it into the coals and you fill it all the coals. The point is you want to not burn the dirt, you want to heat it until all the seeds have died. So ideally doing it in your own oven, taking a baking pan, now that would take forever, but you know, it can be done. Take a baking sheet, lay it out, put it into your oven, turn it on, heat it, cook it, take it out, let it cool, do it again. Do that over and over and over, like on a new tray with new dirt until you've got a substantial amount of dirt and then you can go ahead and work with it. Of course it has to cool. Um, but you would be able to kill all the seeds and all the bacteria that's in there right now. And that means that you would have sterile dirt. So you could do that <laughs> if you wanted to sterilize your dirt. Okay, so let's get back to it. So we've got our pots and we've got our soil, we've got our tools, we've got our discs, um, we've got our biodegradable pots that go right into the garden, which are really awesome to work with. Um, the next thing is the concept behind a um, a propagator is that you've got a tray and you've got a lid. So what I do is I have a garden cloche. Okay, it's a garden cloche, which I believe is French for bell. So a garden bell. Now my cloche just happens to fit perfectly, and this was of course on purpose, uh, right on top. Can you guys see that? Let's do this way. Okay, so I've got my tray, which is a terracotta pot tray. And my garden clutch just fits perfectly on top, especially if I move my thumb there. Um, so that is going to make the ultimate um, propagator for me. And because I'm not doing too many, or of course I could always get more clutches and more dishes, more um, pot bases, pot trays, and then I can keep going. So that's going to be the top that's going to keep it nice and warm. Now, we are in February, and depending on this room, I keep pretty cold. So, what I like to do for my seedlings is, um, although I have heated floors throughout my house, and I could just put this directly on the floor, and sometimes I have done that. Um, when I want to grow it here, so it's away from the rabbits, I will use a heating pad. So, this is a grow pad. This particular grow pad is actually wrong. I wanted to buy a grow pad, and they ended up sending me a rep reptile pad, so it's for lizards. But it works. It works just fine. It also works really well for baby chicks. Um, they like to sleep on it, keeps them nice and warm. Uh, which I will be doing in a few months when I get my new baby chickens. That will be very exciting too. Okay, so I've got this grow pad, so it's going to go underneath here. Okay, super simple, no problem. I'm going to plug it in. Now, the only other thing, well, I guess there's two more things. Um, I'm going to water it. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to need is some kind of light. So this is an LED grow light and it's in the blue and red spectrum and that's supposed to get them going and it does, it works really well. I think I paid maybe 19 euros for it, ordered it on Amazon and it came right away and I really, I like it a lot. I've had it now three, four years, I've had no problems, I've never had to replace a light. Um, I keep it on all the time because all the plants, they really enjoy it at night time. I find that it works really well. Everything else gets turned off so they have sleepy time, but because your plants do like to sleep, you can't let them grow with light all the time. Now the thing with this light is really good for getting your seeds to be about that big. Anything after that big, it's going to keep it that big. So then you want to go up to uh, some white lights, some sunlight kind of lights, or ideally the actual sun. So if you have, you know, this room is on the north facing wall and although these do bring in a tiny bit of glow, they really don't make the room bright at all. So um, in that case, if you had a sunroom or a windowsill or anything like that, that would be your best option. Put it on the floor in front of the window. Uh, if your window goes all the way down or on a table or something like that, and then you're gonna um, get your, your seedlings to grow really well. So that's what I've got. Now, what you guys need to do is figure out what you want. If you want to use um, some cups. Now if you've got some cups around your house you want to use, perfect. Go ahead and collect them. Get some dirt or soil and, not dirt, sorry, get some soil. Dirt is like the brown fluffy uh, powdery stuff that has no nutrients left. So you want something that actually has substance. So make sure you have soil. Uh, we're going to need water. We're going to need something to put them into, like your discs or your toilet paper. Uh, you're going to need something to label them, and obviously a tray, and preferably something on top. Now, you can also do this with um, with a greenhouse. Some people like to use like plastic bags and tie the plastic bags around the top. There's lots of different options online, but this is what I've got right now. 
Um, this is these are the tools that I use to start my stuff. Uh, it's all very similar to what my grandparents would have used. So please go get your tools and over the next few weeks I hope that we can come together and um, we can start growing our seeds and I'm going to show you how to do the good ones like peppers and tomatoes um, and let me know what you guys want to grow if there's anything specific that you really want peas, beans, whatever it is just let me know and I'll go and find the seeds I might already have them um, and I'll start growing them too. So I'm going to aim for maybe 15 or 20 different plants that are the typical most popular plants if you guys have any others let me know. Um, yeah, and, and I hope you enjoy. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this. If you like this video, if you like the series, don't give me a thumbs down. That's just mean. And uh, join me over on Instagram because there's lots of cool stuff going on there. And I will see you later. Toodaloo. Thanks for watching.